Please repeat after me. There is a word from God today. Oh, we're going to have to do better. And it's for me. And it's for me. That's much better. Thank you so much. Our word today comes from the Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter, reading verses 38 through 42. That's John in the New Testament, the first chapter, verses 38 through 42. You can say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. These being the words of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I ask that if you are able, you stand for the reading of the good news, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version this morning. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which, translate, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. This has been a rough week, a rough month, a rough year for our family. Uh, that's biological and church family. Uh, some of us have loved ones who are hospitalized right now. Some of us have members who are dealing with some serious relationship issues. Some of us have had some loved ones called home. Uh, and in the midst of all of these trials, we have continued to be family. 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 Inside and outside of the faith community. Family. And I, as I look at that, I, I think to myself, my, how we have grown. My, how we have grown. I can remember not that long ago when trials would come to our church family and our church family became paralyzed. It was not that long ago that if a member of a committee was absent, then that committee shut down. It was not that long ago that our fear of losing people often caused us to overlook inappropriate behavior. Yeah, church, we've grown. I, I have racked my brain in an attempt to pinpoint when our church began to turn around. I, I researched membership records looking for a special date. I, I researched church bulletins looking for a special program. I, I even pulled my hair out, figuratively speaking. <laughs> Looking for a time when this church began to, to turn around, and I cannot find it. No, I, I cannot put my finger on a specific day or time when this faith community to which I belong began to, to turn around. But, but I do remember the action that pushed us in a new direction. Yes, I remember the action that took place that began the turnaround. And it was not when we started a new choir, and it was not when we began new ministries, and it was not when we started a new dance troupe, and it was not when we opened our doors to the community. No, something happened before all of that took place. And it was evidenced then when we put our personal likes and dislikes aside and began to open our arms to Jesus. I'm talking about something happening which stopped us from passing judgment and started us in the process of actually passing peace and love. I'm talking about something happening that made us want to go and tell somebody about how good church was, how when I walked in feeling bad, I left feeling better. You want to know what that something was? Jesus turned and saw us. I said Jesus turned and, and saw us. Uh, we stepped out just a little bit in faith, and Jesus turned and looked at our faith 
community. We have a word from God today, and it's for all of us, and that word is that when Jesus turns, a trans will take place. We need to know, somebody needs to know that Jesus will turn. Jesus has turned. Jesus will continue to turn. All we got to do is just step out. Step out. We don't have to walk far to find peace. Just walk in the direction of Jesus. We don't have to walk far to find joy. Just step out in the direction of Jesus. We don't have to walk far to find hope. Just walk out in the direction of Jesus. Yes, we have come a long way, baby, but our work is far from over. Right here in Kansas City, we are still in a community in which our brothers and sisters are walking in the wrong direction. Some of them are running in the wrong direction. We are still right here in a community in which our sisters and brothers are snaking each other and breaking each other. We are still living in a community where our brothers and sisters find their peace, their joy in a crack pipe or a liquor bottle. Yes, Jesus has turned in our direction and has turned our church in the right direction. But the question for today is, how do we let others know what's really happening? Today's passage of scripture relates John's accounting of the events that transpired in the days following the baptism of Jesus. Right. And they provide us with a model for effective discipleship. Maybe I should say missional discipleship. Here is the Reader's Digest version. I really like doing this. The priests and the Levites ask John's identity, and he confesses he's not the Messiah. He's not Elijah, and he's not a prophet. When pressed by the Pharisees, John confesses his baptism is with water, but one is coming after him whose sandals he's unworthy to tie. Then John begins to testify. I said, testify. And I find it interesting that John's most powerful testimonies do not take place until he's in the vicinity of Jesus. Uh, when John is around Jesus, something happens to John that makes him say something that he had been saying before that much more effectively. Every time John sees Jesus, he proclaims, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now, the second time that John testifies, here is the Lamb of God. The scriptures tell us that John's disciples heard and they followed Jesus. Hmm. Hmm. I find it interesting that two individuals who, by their very association with John, had to be spirit-filled, left someone who had been their mentor, who had been their guide, who had been their teacher, and they follow a person that they've never met before. I mean, they, they understood the premise behind baptism. They understood the need for repentance. They understood the scriptures. These two disciples were not uninformed, but there was something in the words of John where he's talking about, here is the Lamb of God that caused them to follow someone they had never, ever, ever, Now, in some churches, none of the churches represented in here today, mm -hmm. but in some churches, the congregation has made the mistake of elevating the pastor to the level of Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm talking about congregations that worship the pastor and not the Christ. Right. I'm talking about congregations that will offer praises to the pastor and not the Messiah that sent the pastor. Uh -huh. However, one of the pastor's primary functions, if that pastor is truly about the primary function, is to point the congregation to someone other than, greater than him or herself. Right. Let me say it another way. If the pastor is pointing their sermon in any direction but towards Jesus, then the pastor and the congregation are in trouble. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 The pastor is called to spread the good news about the Lamb of God that has come to take away the sins of the world. The pastor is called to spread the good news about that
crucified. There's something wrong. Yeah. 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 Now, if that went by somebody, let me say it another way. If the pastor is telling folks that he or she is the one and not pointing them towards the one and telling them I'm not the one but I know the one and I can show you how to get to the one, then there is a problem. No, there's something, something, something in John's words. Y'all go back and say, Lord, he talked about every preacher that I know except mine. <laughs> There's something in John's words that caused these two disciples to follow Jesus. They, they didn't know where they were going. They just knew that they had to follow Jesus. They, they didn't know how they would end up, but they knew they had to follow Jesus. These two spirit-filled saints stepped out on faith, and the scriptures tell us that when Jesus turned and saw them following, when Jesus turned and Let me say this right now. A faith community that follows Jesus cannot fail. I say cannot fail. We may not know where we are being led, but when we step towards Jesus, we know we're going to be led in the right direction. We may not know how we're going to get there, but when we step towards Jesus, we know we're going to get there. We may face obstacles, but when we face or step towards Jesus, we will be able to climb we may face mountains, but when we step towards Jesus, that mountain that blocked our, our path before will be moved. Moved. Scriptures say when Jesus turned and saw them, he said to them, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? This is a question that should speak to all of us. What are you looking for? What is it in your life that you need to find meaning? What is it in your life you need to find peace and security? You know, all of us seek something. That's right. I don't care how comfortable we think we are or how affluent we may be or how educated we may be. All of us are seeking something. We, we may not know what that something is, but all of us are looking for something. I, I can't speak for anybody else, but what really, really motivates me, what drives me, what keeps me going is my, my search, my, 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 my journey for peace. Peace. I, I want to be peace-filled. I want to be peaceful when times are good and when times are bad. I, I want to be peaceful when folks are smiling in my face and, and talking about me like I have a tail. I want to be peaceful when I am well and when I am sick. I want peace. That's all I want is peace. I don't want a piece of a peace. I don't want to find my peace in a peace. I just want peace. Definitely by somebody. <laughs> in the beginning, I, I have to admit, I saw peace in a vocation. But a job could not do it. I looked for peace in drugs and, and alcohol and, and gambling and, and women. And even all of those could not do it. It was not until I began to step in a different direction that I found what I had been looking for all my life. I, I need to tell somebody about it for a minute. So I, I was at the end of my rope and I stepped towards Jesus. I, I had hit bottom, couldn't go any lower, and I stepped towards Jesus. And when I took that first baby step, Jesus turned and saw me. Saw me in all of my sin. Saw me in all of my mess. Saw me while I was lost and confused. Saw me while I was living in the darkness. Saw me when I was out there turning corners. Saw me. And he said, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? I knew what I was looking for, but I didn't know how to get it. I didn't know how 
I was going to make it. I was looking for peace that was storm proof. I was looking for peace that was illness proof. I was looking for peace that was death proof. I was looking for peace that would carry me when everybody else would not. I was looking for happiness. I was looking for mercy. I was seeking grace. I was looking for love. I was looking for purpose. I was trying to find relevance for my life. And I, I had heard my grandmother talk about him and, and I had heard my daddy talk about him. But I did not know Jesus for myself. But when I took that first step on my own towards Jesus, when I Something happened. I, I didn't know Jesus. But there was something about walking towards Jesus that made me want to come and see. Uh, you see, I had seen other folks that I knew. I called them holy rollers uh, who always talked about Jesus. I, I had seen folks who had been sick unto death and that they were up walking around. I, I didn't know for myself, but, but I figured if I just walk towards Jesus, I that might affect me or change me. Now, 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 uh, I, I, I'm almost done, but, but the lesson closes um, after they come and see uh, uh, where Jesus is. Uh, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew is following Jesus and he goes and he spends some time getting to know him and there's something about that encounter with Jesus that makes him want to go and tell his brother, Simon, Simon, Peter, the high head, the one who would rather fight than switch. Simon, Peter, the one who was always acting irrationally or rashly. Simon, Peter, the one that the only thing you could depend on with him was if you go out with him, he gonna be like that cousin that every time he get lifted up, he, he gotta be fighting somebody. Simon, Peter, you know, uh, 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 Simon. And there was something that happened. Jesus saw Simon, and he said, uh, Simon, I'm going to give you a, a new name. Uh, the name that you have is okay, but I'm going to give you a name that's going to be descriptive of what you will become. Uh, 